Hello there, welcome back to another review. Today we're going to be looking at one of my all-time favourite classics from when I was a kid, when I was about five, six years old. We're going to be looking at the original 1990 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Um, I've got the Blu-ray collection here. Um, I'll probably get to the other two at some stage, but we'll be looking at the original today, talking about it. Um, just basically, I still think how awesome it is, and I still think it's an amazing film. Um, I remember my parents got me this when I was younger on VHS and they've got it for me. I was so eager to see it, they got it on like a pirate, you know, um, because I was so determined to see this film when it came out because it was a big deal. You know, obviously Turtles was such a big thing. Still are nowadays, but I mean, when they come on, it was just Turtles, Turtles, Turtles mania. Um, directed by Steve Barron, who, I mean, to his credits, he's got Mike Bassett, England manager. Um, Coneheads is another film that he's done. He's also most famous as well for directing the Michael Jackson, Billy Jean video, as well as the um, inf um, infamous sort of aha take on me video. Um, the film very much took elements and work from the source material by Eastman and Laird and a bit from the cartoon, which was, of course, you know, really popular at the time. Um, but it was the film's dark setting and the idea of grounding it in somewhat in reality that made it work, as, you know, compared to sort of, you know, the lackluster 2014 version, which was not, you know, this version not jam-packed with CGI like that version was. Um, I may review that later on at some stage, but as I say, we'll be talking about the original today. Um... The costumes in this by Jim Henson's Creature Workshop really add to the heart and charm of this film. Um, and also, well, as well, an interesting fact regarding this film, it was the highest grossing independent film of the time, um, of the time, which later got surpassed by uh, The Blair Witch Project in 1999. Um, first time as a kid I saw it... Um, in the UK, the word ninja was not allowed in the title. It was always Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles over here. Um, and obviously, when I saw Ninja in the title, it was like, oh, but that sounds badass. You know, that sounds, okay, they're Ninja Turtles now. Because obviously, being a kid, I had no idea the name was changed. Um, things like that that you're unaware of when you're so young. Um, so the plot, basically, there's loads of crime in the city takes a lot of elements from the comic, as I say, such as the Turtles' first battle, the rooftop battle with the Shredder, um, also from the cartoon making the April a news reporter instead of like a lab assistant, uh, a lab assistant to Baxter Stockman like she's in the comics. So yeah, Turtles have their first battle. Raph loses a sigh. Um, basically, he goes to the movies where he runs into Casey Jones and he gets beat, which makes him get even more angry. Um, April keeps reporting on the foot, which Shredder wants stopped. He wants her to keep her mouth shut, stop advertising about the Foot Clan, otherwise bad stuff will happen. Um, you know, so basically he sends the foot after her to go and send her a message. Raph comes to her, gets his side back, comes to her aid, um, and he takes her to the Turtles hideout where they are followed by a member of the foot. And later on, they kidnap Splinter. They kidnap Splinter. So they stay at April's, um, which gets burned down. And then they stay at April's farm. Just really, just running through the plot really quickly here um, to train. Basically, Raph gets absolutely arse handed to him. But then he was outnumbered by loads of the Foot Clan. And he needs to recuperate. So they go to April's farm. And then they basically return to New York to take down the Foot, rescue Splinter and just, you know, become heroes of the day. I mean, all the Turtles' personality traits are there without all being sort of rubbed in your face, without it being so obvious, um, uh, you know, just making it so clear-cut, like which Turtles... But the personality traits are there, but they're very... It's subtly done in a really, I think, a really good way. Um, and, you know, Raf saying, so that's the plan from our great leader, you know. So it's not just... You, you're not just spoon fed this, you know, it's not just for everybody, you've got to make a point, Leo's the leader, they just put it in with the dialogue, um, you know, like Raph losing his temper, Donnie and Casey fixing the truck, you know, Donnie answering questions when they're playing Trivial Pursuit, knowing war and peace, um, you know, Mikey, Mikey ordering a pizza, not done in so much of a cartoon way, um, you know, as it was in like subsequent sequels, like some of the, they made the, obviously as the films went on, the films got, they got a lot more comedic and a bit more silly, but here there is, there is that silliness to it, but it's done in a way where, like I say, it's not patronising, if you know what I mean, it's, um, you know, you only need to look at the 2014 version of the Turtles where they have to give Donnie a massive backpack, loads of tech, and give him glasses just so that everybody knows he's the science tech guy. It's like, you know, he's the science tech turtle. Like, they have to make it clear that, yeah, we get it. Donnie's a bit of a geek. I mean, Donnie's my favourite turtle. 
But you know when it's like Donny can still be cool. We don't have to make him like we don't have to put the glasses on him. I mean, I don't know why they didn't have him like a lab coat as well. And I don't know. It's just when it's sort of yeah, we get it. We know you can <coughs> sort of inject personalities and just who the turtles are without having to just make it so obvious you know like Raph's temper in this is very fiery and he's he's amazing in this I mean um you know even like the introduction of Mikey straight away he's on the phone ordering a pizza so they do get it across that you know that each person each turtle has their personality and I think that really does come across well in this film like I say without it being too obvious all the turtles ha are cool in their own way um <clears throat> without like I say just being like you know because, like, in the new version as well, you've got to have Raph, who's, like, a gigantic Hulk. Yeah, we get it. He works out. You know, he get it. He's the tough turtle. You know what I mean? Um, loads of great lines in this film as well. I mean, I know the script was probably a bit rushed or it wasn't, um, you know, they may not have had a lot of confidence in it. I'm not too sure. But I think the script is really good. I think there's a lot of great lines in this. Um, it really gives the characters heart. Um, it makes the film fun and enjoyable, you know, like Mikey saying, the clock's ticking due to the pizza guy and the turtle's laughing about it. Or when uh, Raph brings April back to the turtle's lair and Mikey looks at Splinter really sincerely and says, can we keep her? You know, little things like that where it's just, joke, it's just jokes that everybody can enjoy, you know, it's just jokes that they just, like I say, give the film a bit more groundedness, give it a bit more heart, a bit, just a bit more of that sort of nature, you know. Um, or when another one I like is when Donny calls uh, Casey a claustrophobic. Near, uh, he says you're claustrophobic near the end of the film, and Casey says, "What do you mean? I've never looked at another guy before." You know, it just gives the film just a bit, just a bit more gravitas. You know, it just grounds it a little bit, and it just gives it a bit more heart and soul and a bit more charm. Um, the way they re reveal the turtles is absolutely fantastic in this film. The, the when I remember first watching it, and you know, and the voices are really well, done well. You got Corey Feldman voicing Donnie and um, it's just with the way they reveal the turtles it's done the build is so good the build of it is amazingly good um, you know that you're seeing glimpses under the sewer drain you see you know you see sort of rat's eyes at the start when he sees um, April take his sigh and then the shadows and it just amps and it amps and amps it up even more until they jump out and the, it just says Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and then Leo comes down um, also as well, like with the villain Shredder, it's done so, so well. Really, really done well. So, so menacing and that long shadow reveal that they do where he's walking to like address his, like the Foot Clan and he's sort of, there's this long shadow just drawn out along the floor, the lights on that. Um, it just, it just really sets up the Shredder really well. I mean, I get both the Turtles and the Shredder get a fantastic introduction in this film. They really do get a... You know that they really do give off this shred of this menacing thing, unlike the 2014 version, which I, again I might talk about at a later time. Um, even the original poster of this film, um, if you've seen it, which um, is this there, but you can't really see it. It's um, like I say, just them, just the turtles, and like coming out of the sewer drain, um, peeking out from under the sewer, and like looking up at this vast city above them just like seeing this metropolis above them i think it's an amazing poster really good you know rather than just showing the turtles straight away here's the turtles it's nice seeing them uh just a nice little tease and especially how this film starts it's you know they're teasing you initially before the reveal of the turtles um one thing that's mentioned this film like i say it has heart it, you know the emotional scene where Raph and splinter after he comes back after going to the movies and being beaten by casey um, there's a wonderful scene with um, Raph and Splinter. Um, again, just grounds it a bit more and says, when he says, do not forget your brothers and do not forget me. Um, or, you know, like when Splinter's tied up, you really do feel for him when he's tied up. When Shredder's capture him and he's sort of chained up, you he looks beaten, he looks dishevelled, he looks... You feel so sorry for Splinter. Um you know, you really do feel for him, and when they all up, when they all start meditating and like communicating with Splinter, like in a spiritual way, um, it it just gives the turtles just a bit more sort of like emotions. You know, it gives them, it makes the turtles seem very uh, like that. You know, they're not just okay, party dude, let's kick some ass. You know, they 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 do have feelings and they do care, and this is a family. Um, the Four Turtles and Splinter are a family, and that really does come across with a nice little musical score. And the music's not absolutely fantastic, but it does the job, you know. It really does um, get the scene across, like this is an emotional scene. 
uh, you know, things like that. There's something they would dare not do in like the, you know, like the 2014 version. They would never, ever do anything like that. You know, it's a shame. It's a shame that sometimes studio execs think, right, let's make it as dumb, as stupid and CGI as possible. Um, and not just have an emotion there, just not have any heart there with the turtles. I mean, the turtles, I still think, are very much overdue a really respectful, big budget movie um, done for them. Um, you know, it would be wonderful, like, to get get that version that we've always wanted to see. And I think that this original Turtles movie is probably the like closest you get to that. Um, you know, they also get the law right of like the Oroku Saki and the Matayashi. They they do get that right from the kind. Not just turns out Splinter taught them ninja from a book, like the new versions. I mean, whoever come up with that idea, like I'm not going to go on about the late like the 2014 version, but who just come up with this? Oh, Splinter just found this random ninja book. It's like no, nah, you know, is that really the best you can do? Um, at least here, like I say, they do get the lore and the backstory right in regards to Splinter and they do again just adds to the whole film adds to the character um the whole film is rooted in 90s culture um you know like with the Bruce Lee movies when I watched when I watched these the first time all the scenes with Mike's and Chucka were omitted like I had no idea um <coughs> like when the foot come crashing into the window that whole bit where Mikey says oh fellow Chucka eh that was all cut out so I didn't see any of that until later on uh, when the UK sort of lifted the ban on nunchucks um, I remember also as well um, playing Partners in Crime Turtle Power non-stop for like a month I remember playing that relentlessly driving my parents absolutely mad because I just could not stop playing it because again I was just massive into Turtles everybody had to see the Turtles movie with the figures and everything and then you got a song as well so that was played non-stop um, I think it was like number one over here for like four weeks or something. I mean, a song for a movie, which you don't really sort of get now, but, um, you know, such was the impact of the Turtles, you know, original movie. <coughs> um, the film's budget was, a fir well, I think it was around 13 million. I think that's what it cost roughly to make. And it made over like two, it cleaned up with 200 million at the box office. So I wouldn't say that's a bad day at the office. I think they've done quite well with this movie. Um, it, was, it was actually uh, produced and... Um, like I think, I think it was definitely produced by Golden Harvest, who done a lot of the Jackie Chan's and all that back in the eighties. Done the Bruce Lee movies, um, so it looks like I say, it didn't it didn't do too bad at all. It really did not do too bad at all. This will always be, well, my favourite Turtles film. It will always be my favourite so far, anyway. Until um, they do, I know there's other you know great turtle stories out there in comics and um you know some animations are really good but just talking about sort of live action here i think the original to me is still the best in in that it just gets the tone right it just get it there's it's dark it's gritty and that's what's that's what i love about it it just it makes it not it is kid friendly but not like i say not in a patronizing way not where it's sort of cartoony zany wacky <clears throat> which is sort of what it become later on <clears throat> I just wish they would have the balls to do another film like this, you know, like I say, a darker, grittier like version of the Turtles um, that was, you know, like, sort of a bit more grown up in nature. Um, but until they do this, like the original is sort of what I'm sticking to. And if you've never seen it, um, make sure, like I say, you go and check it out if you've never seen the original, because to me, as I say, it is the best Turtles film to date. So thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you again soon.